Hey everybody, this is Ian O'Byrne. I'm putting together a video about Google Docs. Uh, I don't really use Microsoft Office for my writing anymore. Uh, even my note taking, uh, which previously I would do in Evernote or other tools now, is all in Google Docs. Um, I use this for a number of reasons. The primary one is that it's all cloud-based and that my materials, the things that I write and save, are always with me. So they're in the cloud, they're in my browser, they're on my laptop at, at work, they're on my PC at home, uh, they're on my phone that's in my pocket. Uh, they're pretty much anywhere that I need them to be, or anywhere that I'm working. The So there are some challenges with working with Google Docs, so I just wanted to put together a video to talk about what those challenges might be and how I use it. So if I search for Google Docs, I'll come across the, the main opening page for Google Docs, and primarily what this will do is it'll just tell you um, you know what Google Docs will do and how to get started. Um, I don't really ever go to search for Google Docs. The primary way that I go in is I go to drive.google.com. So if you search for Google Drive, you'll come up to the main link for Google Drive and they'll tell you all about their cloud storage. I do pay a little bit a month for extra cloud storage, but um, the easiest way for me to always remember is drive.google.com. So if I go to Google Drive and I'm signed in, so this is making the assumption that you already have a Google account and that you've already used um, some of the Google services. If you have an Android device, uh, a phone or a tablet, you already have a Google account. If you use Gmail or you use Google Calendar, you already have a Google account. So if I go to drive.google.com, I can see that I'm already signed in. I can see my little avatar here. I have my WIO burn at Gmail. I will talk about my uh, institutional address as well. But if I'm signed in for my main page and I go to drive.google, I can see all of the storage that I have so far. I can see the documents. And for the most part, it's organized. Uh, I need to go in and do some cleaning after the last semester because I have other pieces of, uh, you know, uh, writings or, or submissions from students I need to assess. I have some recent publications I've been working on that I'm trying to get out the door and then also photos, videos, stuff like that. So if I look through this, I'm at drive.google.com. When I use Google Docs, the main way that I get started is I start off a new document. So if I go up here to new, and part of the challenge with this, as we're talking about challenges with Google Docs is Google Drive and, and Google products regularly change. So even as I'm putting this video together, there's a strong likelihood that this video is going to change, you know, soon after. But that's just the nature of the beast. So you have to be a little bit flexible and, and look a little bit and get your own strategies and your own practices set up. So if I go into new, the easiest thing to do is go to docs and start up a new Google Doc. So this will start you off with a basic empty, uh, you know, Word doc. So if you've used Microsoft Office or Word in the past, you've pretty much seen this multiple times. They set this up to look like Word and other Office products to help you as you get started. So you see uh, up here is the title. So I can call this test. I'll call it test document. So I can start this, I can save it in a folder. I typically do not use any of this stuff. I can see that all changes are saved. So the nice thing about this is previously with Google Docs and some of these cloud services, you'd wonder what was the most up-to-date uh, you know, version or, or revision in the document. I can go in and I can see all of the things that I've that have changed and I can go back in time and sort of, you know, go back to an earlier version if there's something that was messed up or missing. I see all the usual suspects here. So I have the, the file, you know, commands. I can uh, go back in time and edit, undo. I have copy paste in there. Um, most of the things in here I don't really touch. I have insert. So one of the nice things about a Google Doc is that it is a live cloud document. So I can go in and I can add images. I can add links. I can add content and it automatically shows up. The one thing that does not work well with Google Docs is it does not embed YouTube videos or embed videos well into the document. That's one of the major negatives that I have with it. There are other services for that, but that's one of the, the challenges that, that I wish that they did have, the ability to edit, really edit 
uh, YouTube video. I can format this. Uh, I can add in, you know, s specific tools. I'll go into, a, I'll dig in deeper to other tools that I use all the time um, in, a la in later videos. I can add tables, add-ons. Once again, I'll go through some of these later on and then help. Uh, but then this standard toolbar is all the usual things that we would expect to see. So we have print, we have undo, redo, we have the, f the styles for the text, bold, indent, uh, italicize, underline. We can add text color. So I'll add text color or the highlight to text. So one of the things that I'll do is if I'm putting together a publication and I add other people, I'll sometimes go in and highlight a specific color to let to let it stand out and then I can easily get rid of that at a later date. They have a lot of spell check built into it obviously. Uh, I've found recently that the spell check in Google Docs and or my browser uh, Chrome has been wonky as of late so I haven't been I have not tested uh, uh, you know haven't believed in it as much trusted it as much as I've had in the past. You also have the opportunity for hyperlinks. I'm going to do a whole video on hyperlinks and how to do those in the future. I can add comments. Very powerful tool that I use pretty much all the time. I can align and set the justify. I can line space, uh, num add in bullets, numbered lists, indents, uh, clear format, stuff like that, and then change the editing mode. So some of the more powerful pieces that are here, uh, once again, if I want to add a comment to this, I can select a piece of text and then I can add in a comment here. The nice thing about the comments here is that I can uh, carry on. I can have some discussion here with colleagues or students. I do this all the time with my papers so I can have comments with students here. And then when we're all done, if I want to, I can resolve the comment. The comments are all still saved up here but they're not in the main body of the draft and that's very important for me. Another thing that's a nice piece here is right now I'm signed in. I'm the only person that has the ability to edit and modify this document. So what I can do is if I'm sharing this with other people, I can put this into editing mode. I can use this in viewing mode or I can share this in viewing mode. There's also a suggesting mode. Uh, sometimes if I'm reviewing a, a document for a colleague or a friend, I'll put this in suggesting mode. And it's almost like track changes in Microsoft Word. So suggesting mode, anything that I add to this will be li listed a little bit differently. So I think you should call this a suggestion. So this is just like track changes. I can go back in or a colleague can go back in. They can accept it or reject the suggestion. So that's just the suggesting mode. And, and I don't use that often. I'll do that if I'm giving feedback. Um, right now I'm reviewing submissions for a, a chapter for a, for a chapter that a colleague and I are guest editing. And so we're basically using that to track changes almost in Google Docs. Um, and then we already talked about comments. One of the other things that is valuable for me is the, and one of the reasons why I love Google Docs as opposed to just being cloud-based is that I can uh, use it to collaborate. So a lot of my writing, I either collaborate with others on or I send it out for review uh, to peers, colleagues, friends, and they give me uh, feedback using comments and su suggestion mode and everything else. So the way that you do that is I'm gonna come up here to share so if I want to send it to a specific person, I can add their email address there. I find that to be problematic, and I also don't like this recent dialogue, this recent uh, update that Google put in here. So they can, you can add a person's email address and say if they can edit, comment, or view. Um, what I do is I, when I share this with others, I'll go into advanced. So I have all of these options here. This up here, I pretty much ignore. I'll grab that to share the, the link, but that's the same link that's up here. What I'll do is I'll go in and I'll change private. So this basically, this means off. This is, I have to be signed in or people that are editing this need to be signed into their Google account. I found that to be problematic because a lot of times you'll send a, a document to someone to have them edit 
and then you're not sure which Google account they use for most of their editing. So then you get in this email dialogue where it's like, well, which email address should I send this to? So typically what I'll do is I'll say on anyone with the link and then depending on what I want them to be able to do, I allow them to edit, comment, or view. So if I want to, I can say, okay, I, you know, you are a colleague, we are editing this together, we're writing this together. I obviously want you to edit. If it's somebody that I want them to review and possibly comment, and that's it, then I'll add the comment piece. I very rarely do the can view part. Um, because most times if there's an error or, or some sort of thing that I need to change, I'd really rather people just add a comment and tell me to change it. So that has helped me out in the past. What I'll also use frequently, and I talked about this in a previous video, is public on the web. That's when I take a document or a publication, it's in Google Docs, and I want people to be able to search for and find it. So here's the difference. So if I do on anyone with the link, that means that someone has to sit down and pretty much type out this URL to find this specific Google Doc. If I type public on the web and save it in any one of these capacities, then anyone can search for test document, test document Google Doc or test document Google Doc in my name and find this specific Google Doc. You may or may not want that because a lot of the materials that I create and share, I want people to be able to find and use and edit and comment and revise. A lot of times I'll list this as public on the web. So I'm going to basically go back to anyone with the link, hit save. If this were a colleague and they were going to write with me, I'd say can edit and hit save. So if you're concerned about your privacy, if you're concerned about other people, you know, messing with your information or your work online, save it to anyone with the link and edit. Then you can grab this URL here. I'm going to copy it and hit done. So now I have the other URL. I'll paste it in here, hit enter. And it's going to pull up the very same Google Doc. Now, one of the other things that I really like about Google Docs is you can see when people are in the document and see, see when people are working. Because I have the same document open in two different tabs, it's not going to really show me anything. Well, actually, that's a fib. So I can see here that it's showing that I am logged in and my cursor is down here at the end of this piece. So I can see when other people are in there. Um, if you have other people that are signed in or they're anonymous, you'll see a, a bunch of characters or icons listed up here that shows that other people are in there and checking out and reviewing and commenting and possibly editing your work. So this is the basic way that I get started with Google Docs. I'll go into future videos on how I set up publications and get ready to write. But for the most part, I'll start up a new, I'll go to drive.google.com. I go to new and I go to Google Docs. When the new Google Doc opens, I'll give it a title, I'll start typing. After I start typing and I get some sense of organization for the paper, if I'm collaborating with other people, I'll go in and I'll click share and I'll share out that document so that they can work on this with me. What I can also do is if I hit done, let me close this other one out. Uh, while we're in Google Docs, let's look at a couple other things. So one of the challenges with using Google Docs also is when you have Word Docs that you want to be able to edit. So if I look at, I'll go through here and I have a Word Doc. You can see that in Google Drive, this is a Google Doc and this is a Word Doc. So this is a document that I uploaded here. I can go to new file upload. So if you have a Word Doc that someone sends you, I'll often get a Word doc and I'll upload it to Google Docs so that I can edit in in Docs and then save it out. So if I open this thing up, I have an extension that will go in and it will open the Word doc for me, but it's fairly limited the the what they let you do with that document. So this is an, uh, a Word doc that someone sent me for an encyclopedia entry that I was working on. All I did was I opened it up using that Word doc. So you might have Word docs that a, a colleague or a peer or an instructor sends you that you have to be able to edit. You can go ahead and upload it there. 
But then what I'll quickly do is I'll go in and file, save it as a Google Doc. So it's going to convert it over to a Google Doc. It will change or modify or possibly mess up some of the transitions and some of the, the you know, the, the organization of that document. What I'll do at that point is I can go in and I can change the title just the same way that we talked about in the past. So I can go in, I can change this title. I, this will be now saved in Google Drive for me, the original version in Word and also this updated version in a Google Doc or as a Google Doc, I should say. The other thing that you'll want to do is after you're done working on this, I can go to file and I can download this thing. So I could share this out with the editors of this, you know, encyclopedia. I could share it with a colleague to review. But let's say the editors don't want a link to a Google Doc. They want an actual Word doc or a PDF. I can go to file, download as, and I can save this back to my hard drive as an edited Word doc, as a PDF, as pretty much anything that I want to. So that's another tool. This is a way for me to get around using Microsoft Word and Microsoft Office. Um, and so that's pretty much it. The only other thing that I, I will show you while we're here is, so I'm signed into drive.google.com. I'm using my personal Gmail address. That's where I do most of my writing. But then I do have, if you're an instructor or a student at an institution, or if you have a, you know, a Google account through your job, you'll also have many times Google Drive through your institution. So I have mine for CFC. I've had it for other institutions in the past. Um, and so the, the nice thing is, for the most part, your drive storage. So you see over in my personal account, I have 220 gigs. Like I said, I pay a little bit more. The drive storage, for the most part, through an institution is unlimited. Um, you know, they there is a limit to it, but they don't really uh, advertise that amount so i have my my drive storage here these two are different so my google drive through my personal account and my google drive through my institution are almost like two different computers they are two different drives and the the materials there do not sync across them so if i'm working on a document over in my institutional address i need to go in and i need to save it with myself so i need to be able to go in I can open this document up. So this is a rubric for some work I'm doing in one of my classes. I can go in. You can see that this is, a, you know, owned by the institution and this is in my institutional address. I need to go in and I need to share this with myself. So I'll basically go in, share it, add my Gmail address and, and give myself permission to edit that thing. And then I'm all set. So that's one of the, the, the quirky things about uh, Google Apps for Educators or a Google Apps account that sometimes gets people annoyed that the two of them just don't automatically work. So you need to pay attention to, okay, who am I signed in as? And then if you want to be able to work, on it, work at it with a different account, you need to go in and share it with yourself so that you can work on it. Um, but we've already talked about how to get all that done. So at this point, I want to cut this off. Um, Google Docs is a very powerful tool. It's the main tool that I use as I write and share and collaborate. I don't really use Microsoft Office anymore. I do uh, use Google Docs and tools like Google Docs because I want to be digitally agile as I work. I want a, a device or a tool or a platform that's ubiquitous, which means it's in any of the different spaces in which I work online. I also want the opportunity to get to uh, my data to my work using different tools. So I want it to be platform or device agnostic. I want to be able to log into my Android phone or get onto an iPad and still get to my work and still do my work. Um, so once again, that's Google Docs. That's the front to, the, you know, the, the soup to nuts on Google Docs and the ways in which I, I use it. And hopefully that helps you out. Um, if you have any questions or concerns, please leave a comment on there. And by all means, if you like content like this, feel free to go to my website. I link a lot of other blog posts in which I go into more detail and I share more of my tips and uh, tricks. And by all means, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my newsletter. 
I do a weekly newsletter where I share a lot of my thoughts about education, technology, literacy, and I also share a lot of these videos here and make sure that you know some of the stuff I'm doing. Thanks again.